enigmatic hovering planes that just stand still in the middle of the air. A fascinating sight. And it just looks like someone has stopped time. Can such an airplane simply stand still? Are we dealing with supernatural paranormal influences or are they optical illusions? Theories of quantum physics say that our reality is not matter but information and we may live in a simulation. Can there be film breaks like in a video game when the computer capacity is overloaded? Welcome to Hoverplane Analyst. Strange videos are checked and analyzed here. Today's topic is big airliners that were filmed out of the moving car. Aircraft that are filmed from a standing position and fly backwards are dealt with in my video about planes flying backwards. And for small propeller engines the physical conditions are slightly different than for the big ones. I have shown in my first video that when filming out of the car optical illusions arise and I have simulated the visual impression. There have been some questions in the comments so I'd like to re-examine this from a slightly different side and do some calculations as well. Here we see videos filmed from the moving car. Do they truly reflect reality? As the car drives Every point on the camera image seems to be moving in the opposite direction, even though we actually know that all this landscape, these trees, houses, are really stationary. Then there's another tree group, like here on the video, which actually stands still even though the car is driving. Would it also be possible for an object that is actually moving to stand still on the camera image? It could look like this. Whenever the car drives a bit to the right, the plane flies a bit to the left. And if you have in between a fixed point like the house, which is in the middle of the field of vision, then it might look like the plane is standing. How fast is a car? On German motorway it may be 80 to 130 kilometers an hour, that's 50 to 80 miles per hour, or maybe faster. On American highways, however, there is a limit of 70 miles per hour or 113 kilometers an hour. Therefore, I will set a speed of 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles per hour hereafter. How fast could the plane fly? It is clearly visible from the sidecar window. It is usually relatively close to houses or trees and the film is often filmed near an airport. A large commercial aircraft needs about 200 to 300 kilometers an hour or 120 to 190 miles per hour, depending on the type and depending on the load and tank, to keep in the air. Otherwise, it would not take off the ground. I assume that it has a similar speed when approaching. A headwind with 200 to 300 km an hour, respectively 120 to 180 miles per hour, would correspond to a wind force 17 or a hurricane category 4 to 5. Here a big plane would have completely different problems than just to stand in the air. The headwind theory, therefore, does not fit with a large commercial aircraft. Could the plane fly much faster? According to an international flight regulation, an aircraft may only fly at a speed of 250 knots up to a height of 10,000 feet. So that would be 463 km an hour up to an altitude of 3,000 meter. So I'm going to set about 300 km an hour for the plane in the following, or respectively 180 miles per hour. We'll take a look at it now and think about what's going on there. So there is a car driving at 100 km an hour, for example, from left to right, that would be 28 meters in one second. At the same time, the plane flies with 300 km an hour from right to left, so that would be in one second 83 meters. 
car and plane move in opposite directions, which means that the plane is seen from the car with its own 300 km an hour and, seemingly, with a car movement of 100 km an hour, so the aircraft moves in total with a differential speed of 400 km an hour compared to the car. That means the plane seems to fly 111 meters in one second. In the mile system, the car is 60 mile per hour and the plane 180 mile per hour. So the differential speed seen from the car is 240 miles per hour, which is 360 feet in one second. Now there were comments that said the plane flies so fast you can only film that if the plane stops in the air. Otherwise, it would be over at the car in no time. It is about how we see it from the car, not the absolute speed in kilometers an hour, miles per hour or meters per second, but angular speed in angular degrees per second. So, how fast do you have to turn your eyes or your head so that you can keep seeing the plane? Let's take a look at this. Someone looks out of the side window of the car and pans the camera 60 degrees onto the plane. The plane continues to fly the moment where the letter A is here. It is exactly at the same height as the car, so it has the shortest distance to the car. Then flies on and the cameraman continues to turn the camera back again 60 degrees. In total, the camera is swiveled by 120 degree. For the first 60 degrees, the flight path of the aircraft is a function tangent of 60 degrees. That's the ratio 1.73 to the distance A of the aircraft. Overall, therefore, the distance that the aircraft flies during this observation is 3.46 times the distance, namely twice the value of the tangent of 60 degrees. If the plane is only 100 meters or 300 feet away, then you can only see it for 346 meters long, or a bit more than 1000 feet. It flew over in 3 seconds. At this small distance, it almost touches you with the wing. The wingspan can be up to 80 meters or 240 feet. This situation is unrealistic. If the plane is 500 meters or 1500 feet away, you can watch it for 1730 meters or 16 seconds. That's within one mile. But if the plane is one kilometer or 3000 feet away, you can watch it for three and a half kilometers, that is two miles, and you have 31 seconds or half a minute time to shoot a video. At a distance of one and a half kilometers, this will then be three quarters of a minute and at two kilometers, one minute. And in the range of half to one minute, most observations from standing aircrafts are filmed. Here see a list of some videos of this type and I calculated just how long the aircraft is filmed in the air. Where there are two or three numbers, two or three different planes were sighted. At observation times beyond one minute, the aircraft were usually already seen far ahead of the windshield, which allows a very long observation time because of the large observation angle. Of course, that depends on the distance and speed of the plane and the car. You can also see very well on this list that all planes fly in the opposite direction. Because if they flew in the same direction as the car, they cannot hover. I mean, of course, they cannot look like they are hovering. Here are a few examples of the distance of the filmed aircraft. I will show in the end the rule of thumb for the calculation. The distances in these examples are 280 meters, 400 meter, 560, 1100, 1900 and 3100. And in the imperial system it's 900 feet 1,400, 1,600, 3,200, 5,600 and 9,200 feet. Because the car moves 28 meters every second, every point on the camera image moves 28 meters in the opposite direction, 
that is from right to left. For example, if the plane is one kilometer away, then every 250, 500, 750 or 1000 meters, every point in your image moves 28 meters to the left, as long as you hold the camera stiff. In the mile system, the car moves 90 feet every second, and the same the points at 800, 1600, 2400 and 3200 feet as well. But when we look at something, we always turn our eyes so that the object appears in the macula, in the yellow spot, the spot of sharp vision. When we film a moving object, we move the camera so that the object does not move out of our image. In the videos, the aircraft always stays in the middle of the picture and the camera is changed from the front window to the side window if necessary, so that the aircraft always remains in the picture. So we always turn the camera onto the plane, so it always stays in our picture, preferably in the middle of the picture. In principle, we try to balance the motion of the aircraft by rotating the camera. To do this, we ideally rotate the camera within one second at exactly the angle that compensates for a movement of 111 meters or 360 feet at a distance of 1000 meters. If you use a moving camera to film other moving vehicles, such as motorcycles on the street, we can estimate the movement of the other vehicles at landmarks, at the edge of the road. It's very different in the air. There are no landmarks and there's no indication to tell if the plane is standing or flying. We try to help with any landmarks around the plane. But are they really as close to the plane as the roadside is to the motorcycle? The result of this camera rotation is that a point on the image moves 28 meters to the right at a distance of 250 meters, 55 meters in 500 meters, 83 meters in 750 meters and 111 meters in 1000 meters. That was exactly the intention. We turn 6 degrees in one second. The green arrows are the movement of the car, the blue arrows the movement of the camera, and we can just add it up. The sum, these are now the red arrows. Right next to the car on the roadside, everything moves 28 meters to the left. At a distance of 250 meters, the movement to the left by the car and to the right by the camera rotation cancel each other out. The point in 250 meter distance does not move. This is a fixed point or resting point. In 500 meters then everything moves 55 minus 28, so 28 meters to the right. In 750 meters distance 83 minus 28, that is 55 meters to the right. And in 1000 meters, we know that already 111 minus 28, that is 83 meters, respectively 270 feet. What happens to the clouds, which, if they are hanging low, are 1 to 2 kilometers away, but can also be 10 kilometers high? Even at a distance of 2 kilometers, that is twice as far away as the plane, they seem to move at 194 meters a second. Even though the clouds are actually resting, the camera rotation gives them a strong apparent movement in the wrong direction, apparently flying in the same direction as the car is driving. From the sketch of drawing to the real world, how does it look in 3D? Seen from the car window, what is in the distance is getting smaller. The green arrows from the car movement are disappearing in the distance. The camera's rotation seems to be slowing down the distance a little less noticeable. But a big change does not arise, only that the resting point seems much further away. Because we see much more clearly the first 250 meters than the 750 meters behind. Now, here are a few experiments in a small model landscape with car and plane. 
the car drives freely between two rails that represent the road. In the first round we look at a time glitch plane that stops in the middle of the air. I simply glued the plane in the air using a part of a pen. The car is simply pushed forward with the help of the rod and that's how it looks from the car's perspective. In the next experiment the aircraft is pulled by a thread and simultaneously moves the car via a movable rod on a glued fixed point. In many videos a house or building is currently at the resting point. That's why I put a small house next to the fixed point in my experimental landscape. In the first round the car and plane are equidistant from the fixed point and move at the same speed. If I stubbornly keep the camera straight out of the car, the plane will move past the house. But it's far too short. Such a movie does not last long and is uninteresting on YouTube. Now I always try to keep the camera exactly on the plane from the car. And now the plane is always about the same spot behind or above the house. In the second round the plane is twice as far from the fixed point as the car. So the plane is traveling twice as fast, no matter if you measure the distance vertically or diagonally. So it looks like, even now the plane is always about the same place in relation to the house. In the third pass the fixed point is offset, so that the aircraft has three times the speed and that looks like this again. Standing plane, single, double or triple speed. On the camera picture everything looks pretty much the same. The only difference is the distance of the aircraft. So for the camera image the ratio of the size of the aircraft to the size of the house. This house is four stories high. One floor about 2.5 meters or 7 feet. So this makes together 10 meters or 30 feet. The aircraft has two engines. The length for such an aircraft can vary from 30 meters or 100 feet length for a Boeing 737 up to 70 meters or 230 feet for an Airbus A350. I assume now as an average value 50 meters or 170 feet. The 50 meters are not even half the size of the 10 meters of on the camera picture. So the plane is at least 10 times more likely 12 times as far away as the house. If the plane was really standing still in the air, then the house would have to move because it is 12 times closer to the car. But if the plane is 12 times farther away than the house and both are in the picture, then I conclude from it necessarily the aircraft must move approximately at 12 times the speed of the car. In many such videos there are resting points in the landscape such as trees, houses or lanterns and these resting points increase the visual impression that the plane would stand still. But that's only because your eye assumes that the rest point and the plane are exactly at the same distance. Is there always a point of rest when we film in the opposite direction? That is to say differently asked, do the lines of sight from the car to the plane always intersect at one point? You can try it yourself on a piece of paper with two lines Divide it into exactly the same sections. Below for the car always one mark further, for the plane above three marks at a time. And you see everything crosses exactly in one point. The same in a design with Excel. At exactly the same distances the point is always exactly in the middle. If I reduce the distances on the lower axis then the point moves downwards and only if the lines are no longer parallel, so if plane and car are not exactly parallel to each other, then this intersection moves a little back and forth. Those who are good at math will still remember the intercept theorem. Lines passing through a point always intersect two parallel lines in the same ratio or vice versa if two parallel lines are cut in the same ratio, the lines always go through one point. 
from the intercept theorem also follows that the fixed point divides the line between the car and plane in the same ratio as the two speeds. I summarize this now. Whenever the car and the aircraft move at constant speed in parallel but in opposite directions, the connecting lines, that is, when looking from the car to the plane, pass through a point that does not move on the camera image that is resting. This means that when I look at the plane from the car or aim at the plane with a camera, I see the plane near that point of rest. And that's why it gives the impression that the plane is standing in the air, because it is right next to this point of rest, and this resting point is a fixed object. If clouds are visible, then the paper test I recommended in my first video is a good mental training to mentally separate the plane from the buildings. Here it works well, here it is difficult. The apparent movement of the aircraft in front of the clouds is partly caused by the actual flight, in part by the too fast apparent movement of the clouds, so the airspeed is shown too fast. But how is it now with the videos or video parts, where one sees no resting point, which can be hidden or lie in a meadow, where one does not recognize it? The laws of optics are of course the same. There always is a resting point. But what good is that, if we do not see it? The landscape speeds past the car, only the plane is standing. But we know that the plane in reality is not standing still. That is because we hold the camera on it. It must be in the middle of the picture. The clouds might be the only clue, but they are even farther away than the plane. The plane could stand in the air like an helicopter. It could fly slowly or fly fast. That looks exactly the same. We just cannot know that. We could calculate that. But we need the distance of the plane and the speed of the car and would have to estimate the angular speed by which the camera is rotated. It's quite complicated and it's actually much easier to say I really cannot see it exactly and I cannot figure it out, but most of the time the planes are flying forwards, so this one will fly forwards as well. If we ourselves are driving in a car and say these planes are standing in the air, that's exactly the same thing as looking out of the window on an intercity train and claiming the houses suddenly have got wheels and were running past the window. And if really big airplanes should stand still in the air, then there should be at least one or two of the dozens of YouTube videos filmed from the same direction, or really from a standing position. But there is not one. With such videos on YouTube, you could get a good access rate and can make money. So it's only logical that there are many collection videos. But you have to keep in mind that there are all sorts of deceptions mixed up there. The planes filmed from the moving car described in this video, the airplanes filmed seemingly from a standing position, suddenly flying backwards, as described in my other video, and the smaller propeller planes which fly at about 80 km an hour against a strong wind and actually can stand in the air. There might be miracles, but they have not yet been filmed for all videos I saw on YouTube have natural explanations. Finally, I'll show you a rule of thumb on how to estimate the distance of an aircraft. On a picture where the plane is closest, simply measure the length of the plane and then divide the width of the screen by it. So in this case, the plane fits 8.7 times in the screen. Now multiply this value by the actual length of the plane. As a guide simply count the engines of the aircraft. The most common plane types are Boeing or Airbus. A two-jet aircraft is on average 35 to 40 meters long, but there are very large fluctuations and with 50 I can calculate easier than with 35. A three-beam aircraft with a nozzle at the rear of the fin is the simplest. There is only one type, 45 meters long. A four-jet airplane, so around 70 meters, 
considering that the Boeing 707 is already relatively old. If the aircraft is so small that you can count no engines, then I take as an average 60 meters. In our example, this would be a four beam aircraft and that would be 8.7 times 70, that is 609 meters away. Why can I estimate it this way? I equate the apparent width of the landscape on the video where the plane flies with the distance of the plane. Most cameras, including cell phones, have an opening angle of 50 degrees. By the way, the phone taken horizontally would be 60 degrees. The ratio of the filmed image with B to the distance A is twice the tangent of 25 degrees. 2 times 0 0.47 equals 0 0.93. The filmed image with B is thus 93% of the distance A, which means that it is only 7% too small. So if I use this rule of thumb, I could still add 7% of the calculated distance. This is of course only a rough guide and of course does not work when zoomed, for then the opening angle will change. Time is relative, according to Einstein. In some situations in life, I already had the feeling that it would stand still for me personally. Our knowledge is not as big as we sometimes think, and there is certainly much more than what we can hear and see. I also believe that our science is still very much in the dark in many areas. Maybe there are even really irregularities concerning time. But in general, time will keep running normally. The planes you seem to see to be standing in the air follow the natural laws of nature, and time does not stand still in these cases, and there is nothing to be afraid of. And if you live in a simulation, then the simulation is so perfect that even with the observation of airplanes, all natural laws are correctly kept. I hope you enjoyed this video. And do not forget to give me a thumb up and share the video on Facebook and so on. There are a few other interesting videos on this topic on my channel. Just stop by. And so I say thanks for watching and bye until next time.